dreadful portent when Harry's close friends warning the Duke not married with Meghan. In fairy tales, when the commoner marries a prince, the two of them proceed to live happily ever after. But Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's lives only became more complicated and challenging after they tied the knot. As you're probably aware, the couple exchanged vows in a large, lavish ceremony in 2018. Meghan became the Duchess of Sussex when she married Harry, but she also gained an army of staunch haters, many of whom seemed to have nothing better to do than to try and destroy her reputation and peace of mind. It's unclear why Meghan seems to rub so many Brits the wrong way, but the mixed reaction began well before she and Harry tied the knot. In his upcoming book Revenge, Meghan, Harry and the War Between the Windsors, investigative journalist Tom Bauer claims that Harry invited 16 of his closest friends to meet Meghan in 2016. And the meeting did not go well. The friends were all classmates of Harry's from Eton, England's most exclusive public school, ironically, what we would call a private school here in the States. According to Bowers, the classmates warned Harry that he would be f-king nuts to marry Meghan. It seems the trouble arose when Meghan reprimanded them for their jokes about sexism, feminism and transgender people. Bauer describes Harry's friends as employees of London's most lucrative banks and auction houses. So yeah, this was a bunch of white finance brothers rolling their eyes at woman of color as she encouraged them to cool it on the casual racism, misogyny, homophobia, and transphobia. It was probably a very ugly scene, and it's not hard to see why Harry has since cut ties with most of these blokes. He had not anticipated Meghan's reaction. Their jokes, involving sexism, feminism and transgender people, ricocheted around the living rooms and dining rooms, Bauer writes. Without hesitation, Meghan challenged every guest whose conversation contravened her values, the author continues. She lacked any sense of humor. Driving home after Sunday lunch, the texts pinged between the cars, OMG, what about her? Said one. Harry must be f-king nuts. Bauer goes on to claim that Meghan reprimanded guests if they made the slightest inappropriate comment, noting that nobody was exempt from the future Duchess criticism. The journalist claims a similar scene unfolded the following year, when Harry and Meghan travelled to Jamaica to attend the wedding of Tom Skippy and Skip. The author notes that Harry and Meghan arrived in the island nation separately, with Harry flying commercial from London, and Meghan taking a friend's private jet from Toronto. This was apparently taken by the other guests as a sign that Meghan had grown too big for her britches, even though she and Harry were not yet married. After the couple's A-list wedding, Bauer writes, Meghan's frustrations continued, as she failed to instantly win over the UK citizenry. Meghan could not understand that Diana had won the public's affection after years of work, Bauer writes. Neither she nor Harry could grasp that emulating Diana required time to weave a narrative and create a brand from which influence would flow. Bauer's book won't hit stores until July 21, so it's too soon to pass judgment. But it sounds like the UK tabloid press has churned out yet another 300-page hit piece about the American Duchess. According to Tom Brooks, author of the upcoming Revenge, Meghan, Harry and the War Between the Windsors, the Queen openly expressed relief after it was revealed that Meghan would not be in attendance at the funeral of her husband, Prince Philip. Thank goodness Meghan is not coming, the monarch said in a clear voice to her trusted aides, Brooks quotes the Queen as saying. It's unclear why the Queen was so relieved but it's safe to say it had something to do with all the tabloid-friendly drama in which her family was immersed at the time.